everyone, I'm Amanda and welcome back to my channel. If you've been watching my Costa Rica videos in the past couple of weeks, you will know that yeah, I am back home and am in definitely a different situation today. I have been back from Costa Rica for about seven or eight weeks already and wow, what a busy time it's been. So I had a uh, video idea this morning, mainly because it's currently March 2020 and a lot of people have been quarantined around the world for the COVID-19 virus. And along with those quarantines, a lot of people have been sent home from work and are starting to work from home for the very first time in their lives or their careers. So I've actually been working from home for about a decade. I um, have even been working full-time from home uh, for five years. And I actually really love working from home. I find that I can work more efficiently, more effectively, and in general, I find that I'm actually healthier when I work from home. So I wanted to make this video for everyone who has been sent home from work and um, needs to kind of learn how to work from home really quickly amidst everything else that is going on that's very stressful right now. Um, and then if you are watching this video in the future, a few years from now, whatever, uh, hopefully this video is still helpful for you. I believe that more and more companies are going to be um, hiring a work at home workforce in the future, mainly because most of the work we do every day is on our laptops and smartphones and there's really no reason for a lot of people to go to a physical location to work. Uh, with the climate crisis, you know, commuting to and from work is not necessarily the best environmental decision. But for now, the timeliness of this video is definitely related to the current pandemic situation that we are having in the world. So I hope this video helps you figure out how you can more productively and effectively work from home. Let's launch right into a couple of my tips and things that I do. So my first tip when you start working from home is set up a dedicated workspace. Now, I realize that not everyone has a spare room in their house or a spare area to work from. However, I highly recommend at the very least maybe purchasing a desk or a table, something that you can mentally always associate with your workspace. I personally have a desk set up. I have some shelves above it. I have a calendar hanging on the wall. This is a place that I always associate with my nine to five work, so to speak. Um, I tend to not go into this space on the weekend. Um, it just creates a nice mental and physical separation between my work and the rest of my house and the rest of my life, basically. The key things to put in your workspace are obviously a surface to put your computer on, um, you know, have your cords and chargers and all those things set up very comfortably and have them on hand. I also highly, highly recommend having a proper office desk chair. So shockingly, I did not get a proper chair until about a year ago. I should have gotten one much sooner because I do have back uh, issues. And I'm pretty sure that having inadequate office seating is responsible for a lot of the appointments I've had to make with my chiropractor in the past. So I purchased a real deal office chair. I purchased a Hayworth chair. It's called the Hayworth Soji. And if you're going to spend your career um, at an at-home office, this is the first and maybe only thing you really need to buy for yourself. Obviously, lighting can be important, although I don't find certain lighting to be too important for me because when you're spending most of your time on the laptop, um, that's not incredibly important. I don't find printers to be very important. If you do want an accessory, maybe buy a mouse, um, an extra keyboard so you can place that in a more ergonomic spot. But luckily, 
in the era we're living in, you don't need a lot of extra accessories at home. I find I don't even really use pens and paper that much. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to get started with an at-home office. You don't have to have a ton of supplies anymore. One thing I do like to do is um, make sure your home office is the right temperature. So in the summer, have an air conditioner. In the winter, you know, you could maybe have an extra uh, heating source. Um, just make sure you remain comfortable because that's really important for your mental and physical well-being in your home office. Another thing I like to do is make sure that I have natural lighting. Now this is one of the big benefits of working from home because in the past I worked in offices where there was not very good natural lighting and I found that it really contributed to my seasonal depression. Um, so make sure if you can have a window near your desk, um, but even more importantly crack the window, go outside sometimes, get some fresh air, get some daylight. That's one of the biggest advantages of working from home is that you don't have to be stuck in a dark cubicle in the middle of a big office where you don't see the day light most of the time. A final tip for setting up your home office is filling it with things that you love. Now I'm going to talk about distractions in just a second, but I don't mean fill it with things that are going to distract you and prevent you from working, um, but fill it with things that will help you focus better and feel more comfortable. Now for some people this might mean you will have a very minimalist, sleek space with not a lot of color or, or um, pictures or distractions and that's totally fine. Uh, personally, I love, as you can tell, natural greenery, flowers, plants. Um, I have a fish tank. I have really filled my home office with things that make me feel relaxed and comfortable. Not relaxed in the sense that I want to take a nap, but relaxed in the sense of, you know, comfortable and focused and really at ease in my space. You can really personalize your space uh, to you quite a bit. So I have shelves over my desk that contain different crystals, they contain a few little souvenirs from my travels. Um, so there's a lot of nice personalization you can do in whatever room you're working in. I remember when I worked in an office I just had this plain grey cubicle and honestly day after day it sort of started to make me feel less happy um, versus at home where I've painted the walls in a color I love and really have freedom to put a lot of plants around. So another massive, massive tip I have for everyone is to have some self-control and some discipline. I know that sounds really boring and not fun, but this is so true. And this is probably the biggest difficulty with working from home. And this is probably the reason why a lot of people either have stereotypes that people who work from home aren't really working or um, they think that they could never work from home because they have no self-control. So here's how to mitigate all of that. If you have a set work schedule, like my company has set office hours, you just have to work between those hours or you will no longer have a job at some point. So um, that can kind of keep you structured. Just remember your work hours when you were commuting to work and do the same exact thing at home. Um, if you have a little bit of a less strict schedule, you're going to have to make your own schedule and stick to it. Once you get started with your work day, you may find that you can get distracted, you might remember that you forgot to wash the floor, or you have to walk your dog, or you have to answer the door, or answer the phone, or, you know, things start happening that happen in a house that don't necessarily happen in a more controlled office environment. What I do to minimize distractions is I literally ripped off my doorbell. <laughs> Actually, that really did help. I mean, 
don't put yourself in danger, like I probably should have a doorbell, but you know, start to evaluate some of those things in your house and ask yourself if you really need them. Um, you know, don't answer personal phone calls for a few hours. One thing that I find really helps is I do work sprints and these are things that I create for myself. I look at the clock, I tell myself for one hour I am going to do absolutely nothing but focus on this work task. And by nothing I mean I won't go to the bathroom, I won't get a drink of water, I won't answer the door, I won't do anything uh, except for actually work. And that hour usually flies past. Sometimes I do it for two or three hours at a time. Um, and I know a work day is eight hours, so by an hour I mean after the hour's up I can, you know, stand up, I can get a drink of water, things like that. Playing these little games, time management games with yourself, really will help you focus when you absolutely have to. There are also a lot of um, time management apps that you can download. I don't use those, I just purely use a timer or a clock. Um, but you could experiment with some time management apps that might help you out. Conversely, um, some days I actually get so into work that I forget to take breaks. And that might seem unbelievable, but yeah, once you get used to working from home, that can happen. And um, I also use timers and try to sit, stick to a set schedule for eating and taking a quick like kind of walking break or something like that. So I try to set my breakfast, lunch, dinner schedule um, the same time every day. Of course I don't always stick to it, but as much as you can to structure in meal times and any breaks if you have them uh, will really help you out and just kind of help you maintain a sense of structure that is really needed during a work day. So, this week, when a lot of people were posting on social media that they've been sent home from work and now have to work from home, uh, one, of the th <laughs> one of the first things I saw many people post on like Instagram is, okay, I'm going to watch Netflix now. <laughs> um, so some people may have been joking, but other people may seriously be unable to associate work with being at home. One of the ways to combat this is to keep entertainment sources away from your work day. So obviously if you're forced to work certain hours, you're probably going to be less tempted by watching Netflix. But if you're someone who is a freelancer or doing a lot of contract work um, that doesn't necessarily have set work hours, you may be tempted to turn to Netflix and watch it for the whole morning instead of working on your website or working on responding to client emails. My tip for this is to really, just in general in your life, to try to avoid passive entertainment. So what this means is, first thing in the morning, if you're tempted to watch a video or if like later in the evening when you would normally be commuting back home from work, you're tempted to watch a video or turn on the TV. Don't do it. Try to get in the habit of doing something like reading a book, listening to a podcast, listening to an audiobook, um, sketching or drawing, um, going out into the garden, whatever you enjoy doing as a hobby but isn't such a passive entertainment form where you're gonna suddenly get into this um, like five hour marathon of a Netflix show. Anything that keeps your mind active and prevents you from getting too groggy, my mom used to call this the home disease, you know what I mean? Like where you're just at home doing like non-active things with your brain. Try to avoid that as much as you can, especially on the margins of your day between transitioning from your home life and your work day. One of the other great ways to do this is to set a at-home uh, fitness or exercise practice. So right now with the quarantine going on, not a lot of people are going to the gym or going to like yoga classes or exercise classes but you just have to do a quick YouTube search and there are so many classes available to you free online. I 
personally have a daily yoga practice, which means that every single day for anywhere from 20 minutes to 90 minutes, either in the morning or the evening, I do yoga. Um, and I tend to do this by following a lot of videos. Another option is to just go outside. So again, I'm speaking in, in March 2020 when people are asked to stay at home. But if you have a yard, you can go out in your yard. Um, you could drive to a park and walk around the park and then go back home again. And so I highly benefit from going on frequent walks. I go to parks and wander around there. Um, if I lived in the country, I would definitely be walking around. Go outside, go for a walk, go to a park. Uh, if for some reason you are homebound, but you have a small outdoor space, step outside into that outdoor space. Um, even though it's still the temperature outside is very cold, we've actually had a shockingly warm March, and so I have been going outside and sitting for a few minutes and soaking up the sun, and it's actually really nice and refreshing to get outside. My final really important tip if you're going to start working from home is to not become distanced from a community. Uh, so in a normal situation where we're not quarantined, you know, it's great if you can take a class, if you can join some sort of club, if you can go visit friends a few times a week. That always helps out. Um, I have friends who are entrepreneurs and hold events for, like special after work events for their employees. They quite often invite others like me uh, to join in. So anytime you can be a part of a community or be a part of an activity with other professionals, definitely go out and do that. Um, in our March 2020 situation where people are urged to avoid public gatherings, um, this is a time to really take advantage of the internet. My recommendation, because social media is filled with anxiety and worry right now, my recommendation is to actually see if you can join a very specific um, like private Facebook group uh, that's dedicated to something you really enjoy. So there are a lot of private online groups out there that are focused on specialty hobbies, so there are a lot of groups um, dedicated to things like gardening, plants, um, if you have a certain type of pet you could join a group about that. You know, anytime you have a certain interest or a certain hobby, see if you can join a group online dedicated to that interest. Another great way to find kind of specialty or niche groups like that is if you enjoy a certain content creator, a lot of times they will set up a uh, Patreon account so you can give them a bit of money every single month. Um, and in exchange, a lot of them are setting up private Facebook groups for their Patreon supporters. This is another great way to find people with similar interests because if others were drawn to that same content creator as you were, uh, more than likely you will have some things in common with them. And so that's how I've gotten into a lot of great private Facebook groups and communities to chat with is actually just by being brought together with um, others who enjoyed a certain uh, content creator or topic that they were talking about. Um, these are all things that I do and have done for the last decade as someone who works from home quite successfully and I really hope this will help you out if you're just setting up a work from home situation for the first time now. And let me know if you work from home, if you have any other tips to share with others who might come across this video, just leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, check out the rest of my channel uh, for similar videos on helpful topics like this, especially if you are someone who is a very independent creator, worker <laughs> like I am. Thank you so much everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next video.